the burned area mode, which is uh, new in this expanded user interface. I have one already loaded here for easy access. Again, it defaults uh, to the basic mode, but you uh, will select the burned area mode here. And for this demonstration, I'm actually going to focus on three accordions, the, um, the harmonized Landsat Sentinel imagery, uh, the modus burned area product, as well as the dynamic imagery uh, down here. For this example, uh, we will use the Donny Creek wildfire, which occurred in May and June in British Columbia, Canada. So again, using the location tool, I will type Donny Creek here, and then we will zoom into uh, this area. Okay, first of all, we are going to look at the uh, trajectory or the, the pattern of the uh, wildfires um, in, in Donny Creek, and then we'll look at the area burned. So for this demonstration, I am going to select four weeks down here, and I'm going to set the date to June the 12th. Okay. And up here, I'm now going to toggle on the uh, active fire data for this four week period from the 16th of May to the 12th of uh, June. Um, and like the basic mode, the active fire data are from Modus and Vias. Uh, again, the uh, Lancer active fire uh, data are only available for the continental US and parts of southern Canada and northern Mexico. You could also display this by time based and color code the color code the actifiers based on hours or days. You could also use this custom mode to display the actifiers by confidence uh, by FRP, for example. Okay, so so again, this is the trajectory of the um, wildfire over this four week period, but we're also interested in the area of land burned. And for this, we will use the dynamic imagery accordion, as well as the uh, how nice Landsat Sentinel imagery. So I am going to turn off the active fires for right now. I am going to select one day, and I'm going to shift the date to uh, the 7th of July, um, which is when much of the wildfire had died had died down in the dynamic imagery. I am going to turn on the modus terra uh, false color composite. Okay, now in the basic mode, we use the true color composite to look at the active fire and the smoke. Here, we're using the false color composite because false color composites are very useful for identifying burned area. And this is due to the characteristics of the burned area. As you can see, the burned area pops out as bright or dark red in the shortwave infrared when displayed as red. Again, the morning overpass uh, by Modus on board Terra tends to be less cloudy compared to the, uh, the afternoon overpasses of Aqua as well as Vias on SMPP and NOAA 20. For example, if I toggle on the uh, Vias NOAA 20, you can see that there is certainly more cloud in the afternoon. You can also actually see this uh, bright pink flaming fire front right here. Okay, let me switch this back to the modus. And then we will also make use of the uh, HLS, the harmonized Landsat Sentinel imagery, up here, a few quick notes on these uh, these data. So these are uh, com composites that are dynamically generated, and as such, they can take a little longer to load. Uh, there is a two to three day lag between the collection of the imagery by the satellite and their availability in firms. Today is the 18th of October, so imagery from the 15th of October and earlier is available. Additionally, due to the narrower swath width of both the Sentinel and Landsat uh, satellites, compared to, for example, the Vias and the Modus satellites, it takes longer for these satellites to revisit the same spot on the Earth and complete coverage of the Earth, as Diane mentioned earlier. 
between these two satellites, the Sentinel-2 and the Landsat, there is about a five-day uh, revisit time on these. Uh, there are also four different uh, imagery composites available in firms. There is a two-color and false-color composite from Sentinel-2, as well as a two-color and false-color composite from Landsat 8 and 9. As you can see, I've just toggled on the two-color composite for Sentinel-2 for the 7th of July, and the burned area is not very distinct. It's, in fact, it's quite tricky to delineate from the background. This really highlights the utility of the false color composites for identifying burned area. Because if we zoom in slightly, um, and now put on the false color composite, and again, we just have to be a little uh, patient because these are being dynamically generated, you can really see how the burned area pops out in the um, in the false color composite. Now, additionally, while MODIS has a spatial resolution of 250 meters, if I zoom in slightly here, and again, we will just give it a moment to catch up. You can see that now we can actually delineate some of these linear features such as roads, as well as different characteristics of the burned area. And just to highlight this, if I now click off, uh, toggle off the Sentinel-2 imagery, you can really get an appreciation for the difference in the spatial resolution. Finally, I want to quickly highlight the MODIS burned area product, which can be helpful to inform the extent of the burned area. This is NASA's standard science product, and it is available with a three month lag. Let me zoom out here and toggle on the uh, burned area product. Now you can see that a significant amount of area burned in May and very little before May. Uh, just to note, you can toggle on the different months here you can also change the opacity of the burned area here. You can change the color of the burned area and you can uh, fill the burned area or you could also just look at an outline of, um, of the burned area. Okay, much of this area, which is highlighted, which, is, which appears as, as red in the uh, modus false color composite, uh, burned in June, and so this will be added to the burned area product soon. However, to confirm this area burned in June, I'm going to quickly pop back on the burned area, uh, the active fire data for the 11th of June, and select 11 days here. And let me pop this back on. And now you can see that, yes, a lot of uh, this area was um, an active wildfire uh, for, for these 11 days in June.